Port of Sawyer is on the northwest coast of Majorca, and it's been our base for much of our time on the island. I'm after enjoying the most delicious soda bread scones for breakfast here in this Irish tea shop run by Irish lady, Rachel Andrews, and also her business partner, Sally. The locals were skeptical at first, but when they came in and tasted her bread and cakes made with butter and not with lard, they were super impressed. Rachel at first wondered, am I crazy opening an Irish tea shop here in Mallorca? But the fact that you have Chinese, Indian and Italian restaurants literally right up the street, she said, why not something Irish? Anyway, I'm off to catch the first tram of the morning to visit the beautiful town of Soya. This was Mallorca's first electric tram and it opened in 1913. Motor trams one, two and three are the originals and date back to 1912. The open carriages like the one I'm traveling in were acquired from the Palma Tram Company in 1954. As well as taking passengers between the town and the port, it also carried fish in a small refrigerated car and coal, mines and torpedoes to the submarine base that was located in the port during the Spanish Civil War. You can really see the way the bay curves round like a horseshoe. And just out there is the entrance to the harbour. It is so, so beautiful. Look at how flat and calm the water is. We've just left the port behind us and we've moved into the countryside where you can see the orange and lemon trees and the mountains behind me. It's really spectacular. After passing between gardens and vegetable plots on either side of the track, the tram enters the town, passing beside the market and stopping briefly at one of the many places that you can hop on and get off the tram. For the final part of its journey, the tram passes through the main square up to the station, from where trains leave for Palma. Well, that took 30 minutes for five kilometers. Sometimes it's nice to go at a leisurely pace. This is the main square of Sawyer and just beside the church, they've planted some orange trees. This really shows you the importance of citrus fruit here to the town. This week, in fact, there's a festival where they're celebrating oranges and they've filled up the water fountain with oranges and lemons. The dramatic mountains behind Sawyer create the perfect microclimate for growing oranges and lemons, which you can see throughout the Sawyer Valley. Overlooking the town is a farm where I've come to meet Barbara Marty. Barbara, this is the first time I've made a lemon cake from lemons from a garden, your own garden here. So what's the first thing you're going to do? The first thing we are going to do is the base of the cake. And for that, we are going to use walnuts, dates. We have to season it with three spices, vanilla, cinnamon, and cardamom. First, we have to put the bone out of the dates mm -hmm. and prepare some orange and lemons, yes. Grate this in here. Yes, we avoid the white. You grow lots of oranges here? Yes, we have uh, more than 3,000 uh, trees of all type of citrus. Orange, lemons, limes and grapefruits. It's very nice because we can have oranges all year long. And the lemon too? And the lemon. Okay. They're really firm, the lemons, aren't they? They're okay, very, firm. very, very firm. Yes. Okay, this is prepared. Okay, so first we add the dates. 130 grams of walnuts. We normally do it with almonds, but it's not the season yet. Half a spoon of cinnamon. Then we add uh, the cardamom, less than half a spoon, because the, the flavor is strong. The vanilla pod? Do you want the whole pod? Yes, please. Okay, thank okay. you. And the oranges, then lemon. Okay, we blend, blend it. Okay, I think it's ready now. So you're looking for it to come together? Yes, it yeah. comes together, but still 
you have kind of um, yeah, a bit of texture. Yes, a little bit of bite. The smell from the citrus and yes. the spices. <laughs> Great job. The thing that binds it together that makes it moist is those dates. So that's really important. Exactly. Yeah. OK, so now we can do the base. And this is your silicone because it's easy to remove yes. and just very flexible. Put all this in. All in. All in. Move it around. Yes. So press that just with the back of the spoon. Exactly. Lovely. So now we will add on top the cacao nibs. You could put them in the blender as well and then you break them, but I really like to find the pieces of uh, cacao. The crunch, the texture. The crunchy, okay. yes. Sprinkle one spoon on top and now we press a little bit. Mm -hmm. so this Perfect. is going to give more texture. Exactly. So what for the filling? For the filling we need the cashews. Yeah. I've been soaking them in water overnight. And is that important? Yeah, because then you need to use uh, less liquids and they are more soft for the digestion. Okay. They, otherwise they can be very heavy. So you're going to blend all the cashew nuts? All the cashews. The coconut cream. Lemon juice. It could also be orange. Two spoons of coconut oil. Okay. The honey. Two big spoons. Good quality, crystallized, natural honey. Mm. Look at it. Okay, so this is done, and now we are going to be. We need to be patient for about five, ten minutes, so it's really creamy. Okay, I think that's ready. Let's see the consistency. What are you looking for? The consistency of. I'm searching a kind of a cheesecake. It looks lovely and creamy. And to creamy. think you had 250 grams of cashew nuts and when you soak it, yes. then you get 750. It absorbs all the water. All the water and this is much easier to blend and you get this creamy feeling. So it will go right to, to the, the limit. Top. Yeah. I can't get no, over how creamy it is. <laughs> very, very, very different this one for me now. And now it goes to the freezer. And that's it ready. Barbara, this looks absolutely beautiful. How long did you leave it in the freezer for? A few hours, but you, you could also eat it as a cheesecake, pouring it in a, in a glass. Sounds great. Normally, I just put in one side, okay, and then okay. we mix. All right, this cake, it's vegetarian. There's no dairy in it. Yes, because we've been using the honey, but it's dairy-free, gluten-free, and it could be vegan also using uh, marble syrup. Maple syrup yes. instead of the honey. Okay, exactly. And then we're going to use our strawberries, oh, just like that. that. Do we stem on them at all? Do you put mint on it too? Yes. Mm, how do you think we should put this? We well, don't have a this. lot of a space now. That's okay. That's... <laughs> put a wee bit of lemon, because the lemon was in it. And you could make this, as you said, with orange, you with know, instead orange. of the lemon. And then Fantastic. you add a bit of turmeric, so the cake becomes orange. Very, <laughs> okay, very looks good. It looks fantastic. So. It's a shame to cut it. It looks so good. Okay. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. You can see the lovely texture and how creamy it is. And, and the base. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Some of your lovely raspberries. Was the idea behind this when you freeze it to serve it kind of semi frito? Exactly. It's kind of, yeah. Yes. In summer it's it's perfect. Mm. Then you have a kind of an ice cream also. It's delicious. Yes. I love the whole texture, the base, the cocoa nibs, mm -hmm. they're absolutely gorgeous. The lemon and the honey. The yes, honey is very, like it? it's very distinctive. It's delicious. But there's no sugar in this. It's natural. Mm. It's good. Oh, it's <laughs> absolutely superb. The cacao nibs also. Yeah, I love the texture of that. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. The Finca that we're at here, your guests from your beautiful boutique hotel can come up here and do different courses. Yes, exactly. Every weekend they can come hiking through the mountains. There is one way to go up and another to go down. And, uh, and they can come and, and have day retreats. Every weekend we have different um, activities, all of them therapeutic and, and healthy. You do cookery courses, Cooking yoga. classes, yoga, fitness, creating your own fabrics. Okay. Also with essential oils, a little bit of everything. Art. It's here. a very special place you have here. You're going to finish this now? Yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Food tourism is becoming very popular here in Majorca. And what's happening behind me here is that these guests have already this morning visited a local honey producer. And they've come back here to another farm where they're enjoying a five course tasting menu for lunch. And each of the courses has included and incorporated honey in their dishes. The menu changes with the seasons and what's on offer locally. And what I did this morning before I came here is I visited a local tomato plantation. 
<laughs> my goodness. Yes. This is huge. Here we have 12,000 square meters of tomatoes. We grow here six types of different tomatoes. We can go to the table. We prepare for you some degustation. And it's and you so will warm see. in here. Yeah, it's very warm. <laughs> yes, now is the time. Here you have our six types of tomatoes, okay? We have two pink ones, mm -hmm. two black ones. This one is one typical from the island, the Heart of Ball. Kadabau, it's the name in Mallorquin. And this cherry tomato is very tasteful, big flower. Will I start off That's, with this one? You can start okay. with one of them. Okay. That's one of the black one. Mm -hmm. We have two types of black one. One is more sour, one is more sweetie. A little bit of salt? Yeah, please. And some? And some olive oil. oil. Of course. But the key is the tomatoes at room temperature. Yes. You know, not in the fridge, at room temperature. Exactly, is yeah. More natural, more better. Here mm. at the island we eat it raw. We don't cook it so much. Okay. We eat more salads. Which one next? Maybe this one? this one, yeah. I love tomatoes. I really do. They're one of my favorite ingredients. From How the... many different varieties do you grow in total? Uh, Twelve. Twelve, yes. okay. Yes. Here we have this six one. Very nice, huh? Oh. Yes. This is one of my favorite also. Mm. Now, your favorite, this one? My favorite, <laughs> yeah. The okay. pink one, yeah. And why is this your favorite? I think it's very juicy inside, okay? Mm -hmm. The taste is very fresh. In summertime, it's the best one for me. We make the trampo, the typical salad from the island, with this one, and it tastes very powerful, nice. Huh? And what's the idea of the marigolds here? The idea is to keep out the insects away from the tomatoes. The insects who can be dangerous for the tomatoes and can destroy all our growing. We don't need to put any pesticide or something bad for the people yes. to eat. Yeah. How many tomatoes do you pick from here? What weight? Uh, more or less 150, 170 tons of tomatoes. Yeah. That's a lot Every of tomatoes. Every yeah. grow. Yeah. Mm. Try the, the cherry one okay. if you want. You need to try it if okay. you've been here. You're very passionate about this one. Yeah, <laughs> this one is very good. Yeah. Do you get one harvest a season or do you, you know, twice a year? Two harvests, okay. yeah. Now we harvest one time, in August we plant again and harvest then again, yes. It's so good. And they're intense, so healthy. Uh, yeah. Intense mm. flavor. Sweet. And they're also different, which is brilliant. Yes, of course, yes. Yeah. As a chef, it's very interesting because I recognize some of these, but I've never tasted them. When we look at this, you call yes. this the bull's heart? Yes, it's <laughs> a very like, strange form. It looks like so. I have tasted the pink one. I'm just always intrigued with the shape and yeah. the texture. They're like little lobes. Of the yeah, it's very nice. I love this. Yeah. And then this one here, the green. green you call one, this the yeah. green one, is this it? This one no? is one type of the black one. The okay. black yeah. one you call The black this. one, yeah, it seems like green, but yeah. the name is black one, yeah. We have this type and this type. One more sweet, one more sour. Well, listen, thank you very much. You're welcome. I think we'll go and have lunch, will we? Yeah, of course, <laughs> maybe it will be great. Gabriel, this is absolutely beautiful. You've had a very busy lunch, 35 people, five courses, and you're the only chef? All the chef. Every day, every week, and every month. <laughs> so what was on today's menu? Uh, today is four course. The first course is a pambali, the typical dish of Mallorca. Pambali is bread and oil, handmade bread with tomato ramellet, is a typical tomato of Mallorca, sausage cheese, and rosemary. The second dish is a salad cookie. It's a snack typical of Mallorca. This cookie changes uh, every week. Today is onion, confited onion, yes. with honey, sobresada, and rosemary. Third course is eggplant with yogurt, lemon, honey, and mustard sauce with uh, rucola. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wild rocket. Rock, yeah. Yes, uh, and basil. And the main course is a neck. Confited neck of pork, sous vide, 18 hours in the oven, apricot and honey sauce, sauteed courgette with pumpkin and a little bit curry. Curry, oh, beautiful. Yes. Dessert is a lavender panna cotta with different honey, uh, pollen, and rosemary honey, thyme honey, petaceta is a the, the, the chocolate, yeah, the, the, pum, the pum, the pum. Yeah, yes. the popping candy. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a surprise for the, for the guests and flowers. All produce that they visited this morning, the honey is in each course. You have an absolutely beautiful, beautiful setting here. It's been inspiring. Thank you, Thank you. for the visit, Taragust. Sawyer, it's time for some more food at Can Pincho, just off the main square. The 
got a really interesting menu here at Campinchos, and I love the way they've broken it down. For example, they have an organic egg, which is slowly cooked with some garlic crumbs and a rum and isco sauce. Sounds absolutely delicious. And then the ravioli with curry. So really interesting flavors. So that's from the garden. And then the next way they have broken it down is from the sea. So obviously they have lots of local fish. For example, they're gambas and they have ray. Now they seem to eat a lot of ray here, which is interesting. And this is done with some creamy rice. Then they have from the land. So we're talking unusual cuts like pork cheek done in a cannelloni, which sounds absolutely beautiful. And it's a local pork. And then popcorn, chicken wings. This sounds so, so good. Also, they have plates to share. So if you're coming as a couple, you can share. And then they have their veal. So it's a, like a large piece of veal for two people with their patata bravas and a little sauce on the side. What I love is that the way they've mentioned all their food producers, which are local here, and they've encouraged their customers to engage with their food producers. Fantastic. I love that idea. And it's something that I believe in because there's a great relationship between chefs, food producers and customers so they know where their food's coming from. So we have a beautiful selection of dishes here. This is their cappuccino of vegetables. They do this with lots of seasonal vegetables and that could be mushrooms, but what they have in here is carrot and orange puree at the bottom, peppers, which is roasted. They have a frito, which is like garlic and onions, softly cooked. And then they have a really interesting, it's a garlic aioli, which is like garlic mayonnaise, and they blow torch it. And then they sprinkle this beautiful smoked tea on top. I'm gonna taste this first. You can see the puree, all the vegetables, and it's like a light foam, comes out of a foam gun, so it does. Mm. And it's sweet, so there's honey in there. That's so good. The one thing they're known for here in Soya is their gambas, and they're becoming less and less available and expensive. And the way they described it on the menu, extra size from the local fishermen, the confited in garlic oil. So that means to slowly cook it in some garlic oil. And really interesting, a pure blanc, which is a very classical French sauce, they've introduced some orange. So again, they're including that lovely local citrus fruit with a paprika oil. And a lot of work in this because they've peeled it. I'm just gonna taste the tail. Beautiful and soft and lovely and fresh. Mm. It's so good. And what they do here, they take off the head and they actually suck the head. So it's all those juices, which they prize so, so highly here. And the orange isn't overpowering. It's subtle and the prawns are sweet. I think the whole combination works really, really well. This is a very interesting dish. They have it described as a surprise. So it's tendons from veal which are slowly cooked. Then they're cooked further in a really rich demi-glaze sauce, which is like a really rich gravy. Then finished off with that carrot and orange puree and then sliced salarix. So salarix is the bulb of the celery. So there should be nice kind of richness and nice deep, deep flavors. So I'm just going to taste this. <laughs> that is rich, but it actually eats really, really well. And I love the fact the puree cuts through the richness of that. When you cook a cut like this low and slow, you get richness, you get softness, you get, it just melts in your mouth. But that stickiness, and that's from the slow cook and the tendons will bring that. It's the natural gelatine in the actual cut that they use here. And then to serve it all this, they have some local bread and this beautiful butter. It's a roast chicken flavored butter. You can see how creative the dishes are here. I really enjoy the combination pork with apricots because the apricots, they're sweet and sour and the way I'm gonna show you how to cook them now, it's gonna work really well with these pork chops. They're so lucky here in Mallorca where they grow their beautiful apricots and this is the season for them. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna heat the pan just going to soften a little bit of onion, just start the cooking process. Red onion, peeled, diced, nice and sweet, works really well. You can use regular onion for this. Now, I don't want to colour them, I just want to start the cooking process. So the apricots, they're so cute, so small. I don't think I've ever seen them so small. Cut them in half, and we've removed the little stone from them. So now we're going to cut them into tiny little bite-sized pieces. And these are delicious, like if you're making a marmalade or a chutney, they work so well. We're going to put in some honey which is going to give lovely sweetness. Two spoonfuls of that. And then I'm just going to coat the onion in this. Now you can see the way that's nicely caramelizing. So to counteract that, we're going to use some of this sherry vinegar. You can use white wine or balsamic. And when you make this and you think, oh, it's a little bit too harsh, too much vinegar, add more honey. I definitely don't want it too sweet. Our apricots next. And then we're going to put a little bit of orange zest. Put the juice of half the orange 
kind of making a sauce from it. And then we're gonna stir this through. The one thing I don't want happening here is that the apricots go soft and mushy. That's not what I want. I want them to have a little bit of a bite. We're gonna put a pinch of salt, a little bit of flat leaf parsley. I'm just adding the fresh herbs at the last minute. This little dressing or sauce you can keep for a few days and it works really well with the pork chops. And that's it done there. It's so colorful. The pork, all I've done is just a little bit of olive oil and some rosemary. We're gonna season it, we're gonna pan fry it or grill it and then serve it with some vegetables. And a little bit of salt. I just literally have that in for about maybe 20 minutes. You could put orange zest into that. So make sure the pan is hot, but two of the pork chops, taken off the little pieces of rosemary, because they will burn. And then we've got to season up the other side. You seal it in, reduce the heat a little bit, and then we just let that cook away. To serve with this, you can serve any kind of potatoes or rice, but I thought maybe some lovely local courgettes and peppers. So I'm gonna put them in for the last maybe two, three minutes, because these aren't gonna take long to cook. Three to four minutes either side. Beautiful. You can see they were slightly caramelizing. And then that lovely oil. And you can put on that rosemary now. Onto the griddle pan also, with our courgette. So I've just sliced the courgette, not too thick and not too thin, and some peppers. Now you could roast these off in the oven, but I'm trying to get all those lovely flavors from the pork. Season up your vegetables. These vegetables are gonna take a couple of minutes to cook through, and don't forget to turn your pork again. So our pork is ready, and you're just pressing them, and when they're slightly firm to the touch, you know they're done. You don't want to overcook them, because they're very lean meat. One fine little pinch of salt, and then we're ready to serve up. The pork is nice and golden brown. It should be lovely and succulent, and that kind of marinade from the oil. You could put some spice in there, paprika, that kind of thing if you wanted. Now our vegetables, so the lovely courgettes. So any seasonal vegetables, and of course you could serve this with rice or potatoes. I'm a big fan of the peppers. They add so much sweetness and they're delicious. And when you cook them like this, just super fresh, super quick, you're keeping all the flavor and the goodness in. Now, and then the last thing is those apricots. We cooked off some red onion, added in some sugar, a little touch of orange zest and juice, and then some honey and sherry vinegar. And you just literally spoon these over. It should be lovely and fresh. The lovely acidity from the apricots should work really well. And then just to finish it, just a little bit of parsley. And that's it. And as I say, you can serve this with some rice, with some potatoes, whatever you want to. I love how quick and simple and delicious this is. That succulent pork and the marinade with the rosemary and that acidity coming through from the apricots, which are so fresh and beautiful. And that little bit of vinegar and honey for sweet and sour. I think it's a really delicious and tasty recipe. Mm -hmm.